This is a very exciting video. This is nutrition for musicians, so you get to take care of yourself and do discipline stuff and have fun. <laughs> do you guys want to get in shape? You want to look good? Me too. <laughs> All right, for real, very important to musicians is nutrition. Why? Because we're constantly grinding our bodies, especially drummers. This is definitely geared more towards drummers, but just musicians in general. Uh, the main approach that I utilize is the macro approach. I wish I had this in my early 20s and my teens because I was just trying to eat vegetables and be healthy and I didn't realize the, important, the importance that protein plays. So this is kind of a, an all around guide. The guide goes as such. You take your body weight in pounds, and you say, what is that? Well, for me, that's 190 pounds. So that means I need 190 grams of protein a day. What's half my body weight in pounds? 95. So I need half my body weight, 95 grams of fat a day. Okay. What most of you are going to find when you start to track this, and I tell you, you have to track it, track it in an app. I use chronometer, um, I used fat secret for a long time, a lot of these things are kind of interchangeable honestly, as long as it has enough stuff in there, which it probably will, because they're outfitted with pretty much everything you need now, as long as it has enough, you're good, but what you realize is most people are high in fat, and um, so Beth would be my example where she was training for two and a half years, all right, with me, like five, six days a week, something yeah, like that, it was right? Intense. Yeah, and then finally I got her to count macros and she lost 25 pounds. 25 pounds of fat and I gained like five pounds of muscle. In like, like three doing months. This, doing the same exact workouts. Same exact workouts. Same workouts, and I was telling her, this is the part that you need to put together. This is the one thing you need. Finally, she did it, and look look at her now. Go ahead, flex. Give him a flex. Oh, yeah. well, let, well, let me get closer. No. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is, this, it's massive, and yeah. what she realized, fat was really high. My but, carbs were also extremely high, and I wasn't eating enough protein. This is the big one, the protein. Yeah. So that's going to age in your recovery and especially if you're physically active, then you're going to need that protein. And for me, I push that protein. I go even higher. And why is that? Even though you can't really absorb more than your body weight in protein, so they say, um, in my experience, I get leaner whenever I put in more protein. Uh, it's probably because for every four calories, of uh, protein, one of those is burned in thermogenesis. And uh, carbs also have four calories per gram of carb, but fat has nine calories per gram. So it's way more dense. So, you know, that's where we're getting all these extra calories is usually from fat. Mm-hmm. Listen to him. I wish I listened to him like two years ago. <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the grams of carbs is going to be highly variable depending on kind of what size you are. So uh, these are both dependent upon size, but it's also like your output as well. So Beth, she's on like 130 grams of carbs a day. I'm on like 300 or 350. Um, and that's because I'm, I'm weight training five days a week and it's usually an hour to two hours long. And I'm also playing drums for, I would say two to three hours every day. So that's a lot of calories going out the door. And for me to be anabolic and for me to be building muscle, I need to have enough supplies to do that. So I need enough just calories, sheer calories, but also slated towards protein and carbs. And where are you going to get these calories? 
you're going to get them from whole food sources. So beef, chicken, egg whites. That's pretty much where you're going to get your protein. You can also do whey protein. One or two scoops is one scoop for me a day is kind of where I max out because my digestion doesn't like it, but egg whites. And you know what I do? Sometimes I'll just drink this. And I know it sounds nasty, because it is, but there's no gains without pain. See, it says it right there. Next is the carbs. Where are we gonna source those? Potatoes, rice, and oats. I would say potatoes is kind of dependent upon what you're going for. Like, white potatoes work for me because I like to spike my insulin after a workout because that helps me to grow. And uh, maybe if you're trying to lose weight and you're not trying to build muscle as much and you're trying to be more, you know, fit and skinny, uh, then sweet potatoes would be better for you. Same with the rice. White rice works for me, but uh, then again, brown rice, I've, been, I've heard, is better, but I personally like the effect that I get from rice. It's probably the insulin. And once, once that insulin spikes, it, it drops your cortisol levels, and um, cortisol, as you guys might not know, is a stress hormone and uh, that steadily rises as you work out. So, and it's also elevated in the morning. So in the morning it drops and then you start to work out, it, it rises again, so insulin knocks that right out. That's why people tend to stress eat. They're stressed, their cortisol is the stress hormone that goes up and eating, stress eating, a bunch of carbohydrates in particular is gonna drop that down. Uh, so it's kind of a vicious cycle you get into when you know, you're kind of using uh, food as the, the medicine um, for your feelings. Fats, we're gonna get them from grass-fed butter, Kerrygold is what I like, virgin olive oil, and coconut oil. You have to document it so you can see where your fat is. And I would also say fruits, very important for your gut biome, fruits have and it can't be fruit juice because it's got to have the fiber because the fiber actually creates a, like a, a mucilin, like this kind of protective layer on your gut, the upper gut, that allows the sugar to pass down to where the bacteria is. So you're not really feeding yourself, you're feeding your bacteria. And bacteria are responsible for production of serotonin, for uh, actually a quite a few neurotransmitters, funny enough. Um, so the gut biome is very crucial to take care of, which brings me kind of to my next point, which is like, I'm gonna tell you guys some foods that are really good for lowering inflammation, because this is one thing that has really taken me out of the game at, at, at times that I wish I knew back then. And um, one of those things is sauerkraut. Uh, sauerkraut is a fermented, it's pickled and fermented uh, cabbage. And uh, it's a prebiotic. So a probiotic is the actual bacteria itself. A prebiotic is something that sets the stage and improves the environment for the bacteria to thrive. And uh, this is these type of uh, sauerkraut, there's kimchi, a few other, I think daikon is also in there, which is pickled, fermented carrots. And uh, any one of those are gonna be really helpful at lowering inflammation. Uh, I forget what the exact cause is, but, uh, Massive. Uh, another one for really lowering inflammation is fish oil. And what this kind of does is lubes up our joints. It uh, improves brain function, improves, improves your, your skin health, your heart health. There's so many benefits to fish oil. I'd say that's the number one supplement 
period, is fish oil for overall health. Me personally, I take about 5,000, four or 5,000 milligrams of that a day, which is a lot. But then again, I'm lifting weights a lot and playing drums a lot. And uh, I used to take like a thousand milligrams and think that was a lot, but uh, you will feel it once you really increase that, especially if you're having trouble. Another uh, anti-inflammatory is turmeric, but you're gonna wanna make sure it's coupled with black pepper because it makes it like a hundred times more effective, something like that. Another one, collagen. And what I'm personally doing right now is uh, I'm taking pills that are grass-fed collagen. It's more expensive, but most uh, organic stuff and grass-fed stuff, just the, the minerals and everything in it is uh, higher quality. For instance, eggs, when they're organic and they're pasture-raised, it's like three or four times, one egg is three or four times as nutritious in terms of mineral content, like vitamin A and stuff like that. In terms of macros, it's the same. But uh, that's just the broad strokes, folks. So I take pills and I also have like a bag of beef gelatin. And when I make my shake, which I'll show you guys what it is, it's kind of a monstrous, monstrous shake, 1200 calories usually. When I do that, it's like two tablespoons, and that's a new development for me, but uh, so far I think it's helping, and it's like 22 grams of protein for just two tablespoons of beef gelatin. Tendon and joint health is like probably the most important thing for us musicians, as well as keeping our inflammation at a reasonable level. So one very important thing to note about most fish oil is that it's rancid. And the cheap ones, unfortunately, are most likely going to be rancid and they're gonna elevate your C-reactive protein. And so it's gonna do the opposite of what you want it to do. So this is what I use, Nordic Naturals, and um, it's not rancid. Uh, one thing, that I use that I don't know that helps is glucosamine. And it's got MSM, chondroitin, uh, hyaluronic acid, and this stuff has helped old people whenever they're deteriorating. So whether it helps a healthy person that's deteriorating, like a younger person, I don't know. But when I'm really in need of some help and I'm like, my joints are hurting. I, I did too much. I'll start taking this. I think the best way to get into this is just simply by starting tracking everything and really attempting to make some meals with these whole food ingredients and tracking exactly how much beef is in there, weighing it with a scale and entering it into the program attempting to hit these numbers as best you can and kind of seeing where your maintenance is. Now, what's going to kind of help direct what your maintenance is is by stepping on the scale. And the best time to do that is in the morning. It's when you're fasted, when you don't have a bunch of water in you. So first thing in the morning, after you pee or whatever, weigh yourself. And uh, yeah, if you also want to do it before you go to bed, kind of get a an insight into how much you're burning or how much you're losing in water weight, peeing throughout the night or whatever it is, uh, that's also interesting. For me, it's usually like two pounds. So that's kind of a lot. You know, most people would think, oh, I lost two pounds overnight, that's a lot. So try to find your maintenance and uh, try to stick as best you can to this and track everything. Literally everything. Everything. So this is what my post-workout shake looks like. The reason I do it post-workout is because egg whites and whey protein enter the bloodstream faster. 
and so I'm looking for that immediate recovery from my workout and also this ends up totaling around 1200 calories usually so it's very hard for me to get that amount of that amount of calories with just whole foods my calories are 3400 is my maintenance right now uh, I'm growing a little bit on that so that's a lot of calories and I kinda need 1200 to help me get there 8 ounces egg whites One scoop of vanilla whey. A heaping cup of oats. Right now I got rolled oats, usually I got steel cut because those are a little bit more uh, high in protein, but uh, they do get a little gritty. One banana on death's door. And usually I put some maca powder in there, but I'm out. I also usually put some cocoa or cacao, but uh, I'm also out of that. And the reason I do co cocoa is because I read some study of a certain amount of hot chocolate per day actually uh, gets stem cells in, uh, activated in our system, uh, releases stem cells uh, into our body and uh, stem cells are great for healing, so I figured that's only going to help me recover. Roughly a tablespoon of peanut butter. Two tablespoons of beef gelatin. And a little bit of water. Well friends, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but the discipline that you acquire that you utilize in doing this stuff, it's gonna cross over to other areas of your life. And honestly, once you build the habits, it kind of just becomes second nature, tracking everything, every meal you put. And maybe it's a little bit of less time on TikTok or... Point is, you can do it. And you will thank yourself in the future. You'll be a healthier, happier you. So. I hope this helps you guys.